When James Cook first sailed into Poverty Bay, he would have had no idea that this region would one day become famous as one of the most important wine growing areas in New Zealand. Early settlers watched their hops struggling in the New Zealand soil. Giving up on hops, the settlers started growing grapes for wine production instead. They soon realized that New Zealand had the combination of elements, landscape, soil and climate, uniquely suited to their purpose. Join us in a trip across the country to find what it is that made New Zealanders lords of the wine. On this journey, we'll travel by plane, large or small, sometimes on highways or gravel tracks, and because this is an island, often by boat or ferry. Our story starts in Auckland, New Zealand's economic capital and home to the marketing and administration of many of New Zealand's top wine companies. Well, I started in Montana on, I think, 1st of September, 73, uh, about a week after the first plantings in Marlborough. So that was a temptation to come and join a company that was going to do all these great things. And I was chief winemaker when I started. And so I was in charge of all the winemaking. In fact, I was in charge of all the wineries as well. If there is one moment that defines the arrival of New Zealand wine on the world stage, it was in 1989 when Peter Hubscher received the trophy for best Sauvignon Blanc in the world at the International Wine and Spirit Competition in London. 